Blue skies means fun days. Helping skydivers with tips and techniques about safety, training and fun jumping from those who know. Welcome to this episode of Blue Skies Fun Days. It's probably fairly safe to say that tracking is one of the most important skills to have as a skydiver. It doesn't matter what else you are doing, if you find yourself close to someone and you don't want to be there, such as breaking off to open, then a good track is essential. The fact that there are so many videos on the subject of tracking means that it is an important subject. While at Picton Skydiving Centre, which is near Sydney recently, I had a chat with Andrew Barker about the purpose of tracking and some of its finer points. Well, the first thing obviously is getting separation away from your own group. So if you're doing a two-way, a four-way, an eight-way, you have to get into your own clear space to open. Um, the second thing is the awareness of what's going on around you so you can avoid people in the other group. You know, this is a life-saving part of the skydive. So I actually like to think about uh, us having three gears. The first gear is we put our legs out. The second gear is we bring our arms down by our sides. And the third gear is we can de-arch or tuck it in and that'll give us, get us going faster. So just the legs by themselves will get you going. The arms back accelerates you. Dig it in will give you that last acceleration and lift that makes for a really good track. So Stacey's going to demonstrate going from, she's in a formation, she's in a box position, and she turns to track, and the first thing she does is straighten her legs. All right, so that's first gear, the legs are really straight, and you can see her toes are pointed, and she can feel a bit of pressure on the wind here. Second gear is the arms go back. So she's still maintaining some pressure in her body, not too much arch, but now she's accelerating away from the formation. And then the third gear is she's de-arching, rolling the shoulders, tightening up her uh, gut, and that will make a uh, lift at the end of the jump and, and a maximum acceleration. And then after introducing us to Andrew's first gear, second gear and third gear approach, he then went on to talk about advanced ideas on polishing our tracking for flying further and staying away from others. The one thing that I would say um, when it comes to your head is when we track away, if we keep our head up, we're only really gonna see things in front of us. If we keep our heads straight down, we're only gonna see things below us and we may miss. So I'm recommending 45 degrees is where our face is pointing. That kind of keeps your head down, which helps you generate lift in the track. And you can see things straight in front of you. You can see things below you. You can have a look around without massively changing your, your track. And you can see Stacey, is, her head position is looking about 45 degrees forward and down. So she's got a circle of awareness ahead of her and below her as she's tracking. And then she comes out of the track and does a big wave off and does a deployment sequence. So the most common thing I see when people tracking is they dive down and away and they don't really go as far as they should be. You can just turn in place and go and that will that's probably you know a simple way to get started but a more advanced tracking is to actually get your body moving in the direction that you want to go first so rather than just rotate and then track you can actually move yourself away from the track the the formation see the people either side of you and where your sector is and then you transition into your full track by the time you actually get into a full track position you're already many meters away from the formation. As you turn to go, it is important not to lose height. So you preserve your height. Every, every bit of height you can keep during your track is an extra seconds that you've got to either track further or open higher. So as you turn to go, sometimes we call it a pop turn. You're actually kind of a, a de-arch as you turn. So you're moving away from the formation. You're de-arching or preserving your height and then you're transitioning into the track. And that should lead to a flat track where you're going at the same level as everybody else. You can see them below you rather than the dive where you'll end up under everybody, you can't see them and you've lost valuable height in the process. Often people think they've got their legs straight and they're not really completely straight. This is part of the transition. The first thing that we do is we turn away. We're preserving our altitude 
Our legs are our first gear, so they're accelerating us away. And even with our arms out here, we can still be going quite fast if our legs are really fully deployed. And then we transition with our hands and we dig it into third gear that, that, that gives us that last bit of lift. Yes. But uh, if you don't get the legs straight at the beginning, then you're, you're never really out of first gear. You should feel that your legs are pretty much fully straight as you're tracking. Uh, the first part of the track, we're trying to figure our sector. We're trying to go in the right direction. So you've probably heard it said before that uh, an average track in the right direction is better than a really fast track in the wrong direction. So um, when we're leaving the formation, generally we get a picture as we leave. We're almost kind of moving away from the formation before we rotate and we get to see where the people either side of us are. As we turn to go, uh, we will be checking the people on either side of us and we can even look between our legs briefly just to see that we've got our sector right and we're splitting the distance. So that is a, a good thing at the start of the track and then we turn our attention to really accelerating for the, the few seconds in the middle of the track and then we're having another good look around at the end before we do a good wave off and deploy. The good wave off is mainly for the people above us or for somebody above us that, that will see that and go, here comes a parachute. We will leave the discipline of tracking until another episode, but that doesn't mean you can't get out and just go for a track, but make sure you check with Manifest or the Drop Zone Safety Officer at your Drop Zone in case they have any specific requirements. So you can do a tracking jump and it can be very valuable because you're tracking along right next to somebody. You can see the effect of flattening your body, pointing your toes, bringing your arms back, various things will affect how you're going relative to the person next to you. So it's a very, very valuable thing. I would say talk to someone at your drop zone about planning that because obviously you can cover a lot of ground and you could end up in the wrong piece of airspace. But highly recommended, uh, everybody does a bit of tracking jumps to, uh, to fine tune it. Thanks, Andrew. Other than practice, 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 another great way to learn a little bit more about tracking is to have a look at two great videos that can be found at Rhythm's uh, great series of training videos. And so important is tracking. Every episode starts with a fast track in the opening sequence. The details for these video is in the information below. So until next time on Blue Skies Fun Days, fly safe, track hard, and have stacks of fun in the sky. Just a quick note to our skydiving family. Blue Skies Fun Days is here to help our family grow, have fun in the sky, and to do it safely. Be sure to subscribe to the channel, ring the bell, and tell your friends about the lessons we have on offer to help everyone become better skydivers. For more tips and techniques, click subscribe.